Hello and welcome to Framing Adventures with Mr. D. Today we're learning to lay out a common rafter for a gable roof. Gable roofs are one of the simplest types of roof construction involving only one type of rafter. More complicated roof styles like hip or valley roofs require you to lay out and cut more complicated pieces. So for this example I'll be showing you a common rafter for a small shed with a gable roof. You'll need a tape measure, pencil, a mighty framing square, suspenders, a set of stair gauges, and of course, always wear your safety glasses on the job site. Before we begin layout, let's make sure we have all the information needed to make our rafters accurately. Some things we need to know are the pitch of the roof, the distance the roof will span, the length of the eaves, and the vertical height from the top of the walls to the peak of the roof. This information is usually found in a set of building plans, or if you're designing your own structure, you determine what measurements suit your project. The outside of the wall of the structure is known as the building line. The distance from one building line to the other is the span. For my shed, the span will be 8 feet 6 inches. However, each rafter only covers half of that span, or the distance from one building line to the ridge line in the center. Next is my pitch. The pitch is the steepness of the roof, and it's noted on a set of blueprints like this. It's a ratio of rise over run. This is an 8-12 roof, meaning that there are 8 inches of rise for every 12 inches of run. My rafters will have a 6-12 pitch. The eaves are the part of the roof that extend beyond the wall, providing shade for windows in the summertime and carrying rainwater away from your walls. The length of eaves will vary, but for my project I'm working with 14 inch eaves. Finally, I need to know the vertical distance from the top of the walls to the peak of the roof. You would find this measurement on a set of building plans or calculate an appropriate height for your span and pitch. My total rise would be 2 feet 5 inches. Great. Now I know everything I need to lay out my rafter. I'll keep these numbers handy while I work. For my rafter, I'm using a 2 by 6 by 10 foot board. To begin layout, I need to set up my framing square with stair gauges. I line up my square according to my roof pitch with the rise on the tongue and the run on the blade. I line the square up so that the 6 inch mark on the tongue and the 12 inch mark on the blade are both lined up with the edge of the board. Now I can fasten my stair gauges so they act as stoppers, keeping my rise and run measurements on the edge of the board. If you don't have stair gauges, you can also clamp a piece of scrap wood to the square in the same way to make a sliding stopper. First I want to mark my building line, so I come in from the end of the board a ways to make sure there's plenty of room to add my eaves later. I trace the tongue of the square to get my building line and mark it BL. Then I trace the blade of the square, which accounts for 12 inches of run. I calculated that this rafter must span 4 feet 3 inches, so I slide my square up the rafter, each time tracing the rise and run. This is called the step-off method. After 4 steps, I've covered 4 feet of span, and I just need to mark an additional 3 inches of run to make it to the ridge line. I mark this line RL. Let's pause here. The ridge line is the exact center of the structure. We wouldn't want to cut our rafter right on the ridge line. The reason is that the rafter is going to be fastened to the ridge board which runs down the center of the roof and this board has a thickness. We need to compensate for half the thickness of the ridge board if we want the rafter to fit tightly against it. And friend, we want tight fitting joints. For a 2 inch by 8 inch ridge board, the thickness is 1 and a half inches. So I'll step back from my ridge line 3 quarters of an inch and draw my plumb cut. I mark that line PC. The rafter on the other side of the gable will account for the other half of the ridge board's thickness. The plumb cut is the line you'll eventually cut when the time comes. So let's return to the building line. We're going to use the same step-off method to lay out the eaves, but in the other direction. I'm building 14-inch eaves, so I step away from the building line one full step, then add two additional inches. I trace the tongue of the square to mark my tail cut and label it TC. You may wish to add a plancher cut, which is a horizontal cut extending from the tail cut where a soffit might be affixed later. The last thing we need to lay out is the bird's mouth. This is the notch where the rafter will sit on top of your wall. The vertical cut of the bird's mouth will be made on the building line, but we need to do a little more figuring to determine where the horizontal cut should be made. This is where the total rise comes in handy. I can return to the top of my ridge line, which again marks the peak of my roof, and then measure vertically down using the increments on the tongue of my square. My total rise is 2 feet 5 inches, so I'll step down 6 inches at a time until I reach 2 feet, 
then step down an additional 5 inches. This mark is where I make the horizontal cut of my bird's mouth. I mark all areas to be cut away with an X. Carefully double check your measurements and if everything looks good you're ready to cut your rafter. If the first one fits like a glove, use it as a template to trace the rest of the rafters. Good luck and get to work!